Do you think Casa can handle his wrestling? Do I think uh, it, uh, Casa? Paulo Casa? No. No, no. We're going to find out because he handled Yoel Romero's wrestling. Casa's not an easy guy to take down. Not at all. He's an uh, athletic freak. Mm-hmm. And that motherfucker can punch. Yeah. For a couple of years now, the UFC has been treating us with amazing October tournaments in UAE. And 2023 is not an exception. Just look at these crazy fights we are going to get on this card. Rematches between Makachev and Oliveira in the top clash of top light heavyweights, Ankalaev and Walker, and of course, the bout that is no less anticipated than the main event, Kamzat Chimaev against Paulo Costa. Finally, after months of silence, Boers returns to the world arena and moves up to middleweight, where he is about to face one of the most dangerous opponents in his career. What? You don't agree with that? Then give me a chance to drop a couple of minutes, and I will explain to you why the Brazilian Ricky Martin has all the chances to dispatch the new star. Dear friends, today's video is dedicated to five reasons why Paulo Costa beats Kamzat Chimaev. Please don't forget the likes, comment with four words, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new videos. Here we go. 5. Kamzat is losing motivation Do you remember how big Chimaev's breakthrough in the UFC was? Within the span of just 10 days, the Chechen destroyed his opponent twice. That's it. That's it. Oh, Kamzat Chimaev by submission. Just want to Kamzat's next fight happened just two months later when he knocked out an experienced Gerald Mearshart with one shot in just 17 seconds. Oh, oh, just like that. MMA fans were amazed by this guy and waited for his return probably more than for any champion. But then the plans got messed up with COVID, due to which Chimaev was even ready to retire. Complications from a disease made him take a break for a year, but then it was followed by a sensational comeback and a win over a Chinese veteran, Li Jinglang. And after that, a gladiator's fight with Burns. Kamzat's popularity returned to the previous level, and he was set to face Nate Diaz. However, we didn't see that fight. Chimaev stopped cutting weight due to cramps and ultimately fought Kevin Holland, easily choking him out. At that moment, it was clear that Boers was not going to fight in the welterweight division anymore, and he had to move up. But that transition took a very long time. Everybody waited for Chimaev's spectacular comeback, but he kept silent, not giving us any food for thought. All questions and speculations about Kamzat were addressed to Dana White, who stated that Chimaev doesn't fight only because of personal reasons. With Kamzat. Is there anything precluding him from fighting in the U.S.? Because we keep hearing about him fighting in October, which is a pretty long wait from his last fight to his next fight. Yeah, that's on him, though. He's got stuff going on in his personal life. That's not because you know, we're not getting the fight. Obviously, you know how it goes here. I talk about this all the time. We have to get guys three fights a year. So if we don't get guys three fights a year, we have to pay them. But the he... only way that wouldn't happen mm-hmm. is if they have personal stuff going can on. Can he fight on U.S. soil right now? Sure. Okay, so there's yeah. no issues there in terms of hurdles. No. At that moment, it wasn't clear what Dana White was talking about. However, recently we figured that Kamzat, who represented Sweden, will now perform under the UAE flag. It's hard to name the actual reason why he changed the place of living and the country he represents. Perhaps the deal is in the public incineration of Quran in Sweden or issues with visas, but the fact is that Chimaev left his team, gym, and probably got around the law. To get to the citizenship of UAE, one has to put in a lot of sweat, so it's unlikely that Kamzat is a citizen of Emirates on the official level. And he did all of that so easily, as if anybody can move to Abu Dhabi, change passports, and it's all sewn up. Maybe the fighter is patronized by influential friends from UAE, or he is supported by political leaders who put in a good word for him. We don't really know. But it's clear that there are certain things in Kamzat's life that he cares more about than fighting, and it never led to anything good. How many times have you seen the hungry and bold guy lose his fire and he wasn't the same anymore? Sure, I can be wrong, and Chimaev is thinking about his MMA career 24-7, however, his layoff and recent stuff tell the opposite. 
4. Wrestling Defense It's not a secret to anybody that the strongest aspect of Kamzat's game is wrestling. The Chechen became famous mainly for being able to take down his opponent in the first 5 seconds, and he did so easily as if they weighed nothing. Remember how Chimaev lifted Lee up and then put him down on his back? It was beautiful. But will the star be able to take Paulo Costa down that easily? If we look at the Brazilian's career in the UFC, we won't see any fights with Borachinha, who was helplessly laying under his opponents and couldn't get out. Luke Rockhold and Yo Romero wanted to take Costa down the most, and while the first one was most famous for his jiu-jitsu, the Cuban is an Olympic game prize winner in freestyle wrestling. Of course, by that moment, Romero stopped focusing on his takedowns a long time ago. But the way how easily Paolo was defending and escaped from tough situations, it's still truly impressive. Even in the third round, when the exhausted Brazilian missed another takedown, he immediately swept the veteran and ended the round in a great position while in the clash with Rockhold. Costa was taking him down himself and tore him on the ground. Official stats prove my words. The guy has almost 80% of takedown defense, which one should admit is very good. And even if you look at everybody Kamzat fought for, we wouldn't find anybody with such an outstanding defense. Before the fight with Bors, Holland lost to Vittori and Brunson simply because they controlled him for 25 minutes. Burns and Mearshart are jujitsu artists who are not afraid of takedowns. But still, we didn't really see any wrestling with both of these guys. With all due respect, the Chinese mixed martial arts wrestling of these guys is not on that level, and Lee's defense is a testament to that. I think that when Shimaev will go for a takedown, he will be met with a furious resistance, and if he takes him down, Costa will immediately jump back to his feet thanks to his freakish physical strength and weight, which we also have to mention. 3. Weight Discrepancy Nobody is trying to belittle Kamzat's wrestling skills, but one can't deny that weight discrepancy is one of the main reasons why he dismantled his opponent so easily in the welterweight division. During offseason, Kamzat weighs like a heavyweight, meaning over 200 pounds, and if we believe some of the sources, perhaps even 220. Knowing that, it's not hard to believe that in a former All-Stars gym, Boers was evenly matched with Alexander Gustafsson who in his time was a big light heavyweight, and Elir Latifi, who competed in 205 for a long time as well. Do you understand now why this guy out-wrestled everybody in welterweight so easily? In the middleweight division though, things are going to change a little bit. They are mostly big and strong fighters that cut no less weight than Kamzat himself, but one machine whose name we heard numerous times today really stands out among all of them. Paulo Costa looks like a man who can't make 185 at all, considering the size of his biceps and shoulders. However, for some reason, he still manages to do so. Sure, the Brazilian had one big slip when he was supposed to fight Vittori. Back then, Borachinha made 205 limit, but after that, Costa successfully fought Rockhold in his own division. As far as we know, between the fights, Paulo weighs not less and perhaps even more than the Chechen. And I can't imagine how hard it will be for Kamzat to score takedowns in this fight. In fact, we are about to see the rivalry between a welterweight and a light heavyweight who exert themselves to show the right figures on the scale. By the time of the fight, Costa will gain 15 or more pounds. Also, his defense is really good, and in combination with his power, he will become a brick wall for his opponent, at which he can crash after time, but still won't move it. Let's not forget the numerous attempts to wrestle this monster can easily exhaust Chimaev, who is likely not used to the new weight, and in this case, Costa can simply finish the superstar and make a new sensation. 2. Pressure Besides weight advantage, what else has always helped Kamzat to take his opponents down? Of course, pressure. Working as the first number, Bors creates a needed space for the takedown and different maneuvers. In the end, it's impossible to handle the pressure that Kamzat inflicts on his opponents, and the only thing left for them is to back up and catch him making a mistake. But only a few can pull that off. But let's not forget, there's another way to deal with the pressure, to go forward yourself. To some extent, that's what Gilbert Burns' tactic was, but he was lacking weight and size to push through Chimaev's defense. But I know the guy who can do it, 
In all of his fights, Borashinya showed that he doesn't want to retreat and will go after his opponent as long as he has energy. This tactic is as simple as can be, but extremely efficient. With his pressure, Costa made Ramiro wipe the cage with his back for all 15 minutes, made Luke Rockhold constantly back up any shots, and broke Uriah Hall. Sure, in the fight with Adesanya, such an approach did not work, but Kamzat is not a world-class kickboxer to properly batter Paolo's legs and counter him with strikes. Considering physical advantage and not being scared of a takedown, which wasn't the case for all opponents of Boris, Costa will definitely go forward and try to do Chimaev what he does to everybody else. And what will the Chechen do when he loses one of his main advantages? That's an interesting question. It's hard to tell. Perhaps Kamzat will put in a good work on feet and won't let himself get deprived of space and try to take the fight to the ground. But Costa will anticipate that and defend. It's very likely that the Brazilian will sooner or later catch his opponent and bomb him with vicious shots in his best tradition. And will Kamzat be able to withstand a couple of such storms is a whole nother question. 1. Knockout Power If we were to imagine how this great fight would go, the scenario where we'll see the judge's decision seems very unlikely. Can everything I said be wrong and Costa would get choked out already in the first round? Of course. Can Paulo pull off a twister on Kamzat in the last seconds of the third round? It's hard to believe that, but after Sean Strickland won the championship, nothing can surprise me anymore. Okay, actually, everybody knows that the Brazilian's main chance to win comes down to his aggressive striking and knockout power in particular. Borishinha has a very good stand-up, especially against those who don't have a great head movement and footwork. His power combinations of uppercuts at a short distance, rib-breaking middle kicks, and right overhands are a huge problem for every fighter. I've yet to figure out how Marvin Vittori, eating such a number of all possible power shots, not only kept standing on his feet but won, and the mystery of Luke Rockhold's chin will haunt MMA fans till the end of times. Prior to these fights, Costa won 12 times via knockout, and only the same rock-solid Romero could stand with him for 15 minutes. Yesterday's welterweight Kamzat simply doesn't know how powerful the Brazilian strike would be. Gilbert Burns caused serious problems to Boris with some of his shots. Not to mention that Dorinho is a former lightweight who decided to experiment by changing a weight glass. I'm afraid that a couple of precise shots from Costa will make Chimaev's granite chin break, which will be the beginning of the end. Apart from the head, Paolo might focus his attention on the opponent's midsection to use signature middle kicks would be dangerous in this fight, and it's better to focus on the hands. But Borashinha is a wild and explosive fighter and can also throw some leg strikes at Kamzat in the heat of the moment. If Costa, with his inhuman strength, will hurt his opponent's body, then the knockout also wouldn't be too far away. Overall, any scenario where Chimaev fails to wrestle and will be forced to work with Costa in the stand-up will end very badly for the Chechen 90% of the time. But what actually happens, we will witness only in October. Do you know Paulo Costa's current odds to beat Kamzat Chimaev? Analysts put plus 300 on the top middleweight, which I find to be nonsense. The Brazilian has more than enough skills and strong traits to give Boers the hardest fight in his career, if not win by some TKO. I'm not saying that Chimaev has little chances, considering all his skills and merits, he's the rightful favorite. However, I think that Paulo Costa has a lot of different strengths that can give him the victory, and we have to consider all the possible outcomes of this clash.